Tomo looking in zone, back of it. Touchdown! Oh, touchdown, Sam! St. Louis, one of the longest and most storied sports cities in the United States. A city filled with thrilling memories of St. Louis Cardinals World Series championships. A St. Louis Blues NHL franchise with a rich history ranging from Brett Hull and his unbelievable seasons as the NHL scoring leader all the way to the Blues' incredible Stanley Cup win in 2019 against the Boston Bruins in a thrilling Game 7. And of course, the greatest show on turf. The St. Louis Rams and their electrifying offense with Hall of Famers Kurt Warner, Marshall Folk, Isaac Bruce, Orlando Pace, and their head coach Dick Vermeil. St. Louis fans have had a lot to cheer about over the years. And one more franchise to build their enthusiasm for professional football is none other than the St. Louis Battlehawks. Today, we continue our United Football League mini-movie series with the franchise where caw is law, and where everybody is saying caca. Are you ready? Let's get it started. 21 years, my wife, this lady right here, and I sat in this section cheering every year we paid the bill and came to the game. The city of St. Louis is so great and that they always love their sports teams and I think they really embrace the battle. The United Football League, UFL, has recently launched a new era in the world of American professional football. And among the most exciting teams to watch are the St. Louis Battlehawks. In its very young existence, the St. Louis football franchise has brought back a feeling of joy and excitement to a city that saw their beloved Rams move to Los Angeles. Rocky sucks! Rocky sucks! Needless to say, Rams owner Stan Kroenke was probably the most unpopular man in town when he decided to move the team from St. Louis to LA. But former XFL owner Vince McMahon and current owner of the UFL, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, saw the passion and fire from the St. Louis fans and knew that professional football would be a hit in Mountain City. And the fans have come out in droves to support their battle hawks. So much so that they decided to open portions of the upper deck of the dome at America's Center for the 2024 UFL season. After a record break Making crowd attendance in 2023. With A.G. McCarron back with the team leading their offense, along with XFL Defensive Player of the Year, Pita Tamapeno, and wide receiver Jacor Pearson just recently signed, the Battle Hawks have a talented team ready to go for the 2024 season. The St. Louis fans have waited a long time to have a professional football team back in their city. Man, this Battlehawks team has not disappointed the football world or the local St. Louis community. The Battlehawks have already started to make waves in the league with their thrilling performances, unique team culture, and their dedicated fan base. But how did they get to this point? How did the St. Louis Battlehawks become so popular and such a successful football franchise in such a short amount of time? Let's rewind back all the way to 2018. The St. Louis Battlehawks franchise came into existence on December 5th, 2018 as part of the XFL under the ownership of Vince McMahon's Alpha Entertainment. However, when the second iteration of the XFL was sold, the team ownership shifted to where the Fox Corporation owned 50% of the franchise, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his ex-wife Danny Garcia, along with Redbird Capital Partners, owned the other 50% of the team. The team's home games were hosted at the Dome at America Center in St. Louis, Missouri, and the Battle Hawks were part of the East Division in 2020, and the North Division in 2023 within the XFL. However, with the XFL-USFL merger in 2024, the team will be competing in the United Football League as a member of the XFL Conference. Battlehawks team colors are royal blue and silver, which was very intentional in order to have colors very similar to the St. Louis Blues and the St. Louis Rams. And for those of you who are new to the Battlehawks, you may be asking how they decided on their mascot, the Battlehawk. Well, the St. Louis Battlehawks logo is designed as a fierce bird or hawk with its wings spread wide and ready to battle and strike its prey, hence the name Battlehawk. The bird is perched on a sword, which is a nod to the city of St. Louis's rich history as the archway or gateway to the West. There was actually some uncertainty in the city when the XFL restarted the league with the potential that they may change the name and mascot. But the XFL heard the fans loud and clear, and there was no way they were changing the name after the St. Louis fans voiced their support for the team mascot. As if the team would be the Battlehawks. Thankfully, we will all be cacawing headed to the number one question everyone asked me, you asked me, everybody, the, the, the day I got the job, where are they keeping it? They better keep it. If they don't, I'm not going to cheer for the team. Call, call is law, you know, everybody.
It just made a whole lot of sense to keep the Battlehawks name, brand, and catchphrases, since they were already a hit throughout the city. Going back to 2020, the team's first head coach was Jonathan Hayes, an alumnus of the University of Iowa, and a former tight ends coach for the Cincinnati Bengals. Hayes was not only the first head coach in St. Louis Battlehawks history, but he was also their first general manager as well. Needless to say, his hands were pretty full, filling in both the GM and head coaching roles on a startup team for a startup league. The deck was stacked against Hayes, but Hayes was able to squeak out a 3-2 winning season in 2020 despite those hurdles. Oh, and by the way, I think we all remember what else happened in 2020, right? Yeah, COVID. The 2020 XFL season was abruptly ended due to the COVID-19 pandemic and all operations were suspended. Prior to the suspension of play due to COVID, former Ole Miss Rebels quarterback Jordan Ta'amu performed pretty well in those five games of the inaugural season, passing for over 1,050 yards and five touchdowns with only two interceptions in those five games. Tamu looking in zone, back of it. Touchdown! Caught! Touchdown! His 72% completion percentage, along with his 217 rushing yards, made for a dynamic offensive threat for the Battlehawks. Ta'amu stretched the defenses with his mobility and some amazing pass attempts. His performance caught the eyes of Kansas City scouts, and the Chiefs decided to sign Ta'amu after the XFL 2020 season. After the XFL reopened their doors after the peak of COVID, the Battlehawks were confirmed to return to the XFL in July of 2022. The former GM and head coach Jonathan Hayes did not come back for the XFL 2020 season. In April of 2022, the Battlehawks appointed Anthony Becht to be their new head coach. In the 2023 season, the Battlehawks tied for second place in their division with a 7-3 record. They were tied with the Seattle Sea Dragons, and since the XFL didn't have a wildcard round in the playoff system, they relied on a tiebreaker system. Even after they put up the most points in the XFL against the Orlando Guardians, the Seattle Sea Dragons had a better points scored versus points allowed ratio and made the playoffs. Heading into this 2024 season, the Battlehawks schedule is packed with exciting matchups, and they are ready for redemption from the end of the 2023 season. The first home game of the 2024 season will be against the XFL champion Arlington Renegades on April 6th at 7 p.m. Other key games to watch out for include matches against the San Antonio Brahmas, Memphis Showboats, and DC Defenders. The Battlehawks have crafted a promising roster and coaching staff followed by a pretty successful 2023 season, where they posted a 7-3 record and enjoyed high stadium attendance records and reached over 30,000 spectators. Their roster, just updated back in January, showcases a balanced mix of returning players and new acquisitions from the UFL's dispersal draft, aiming to strengthen the team across all areas of play. The anchor of their roster is big-time quarterback A.J. McCarron, making a return for the Battlehawks. The Cincinnati Bengals quarterback gained a ton of playing time when their star quarterback Joe Burrow was out for the season with a wrist injury. A.J. McCarron comes back to the Battlehawks roster after finishing the 2023 XFL season as the league leader, with a completion percentage of 68.8%, and throwing for 24 touchdowns. With the release of quarterback Nick Tiano in order to make room for A.J. McCarron, the door is wide open for backup Manny Wilkins to fill in the QB role if needed. A.J. McCarron's going to have some studs to throw to in this spring as well. The Battlehawks have signed two wide receivers to the roster that will make this offense a potential to be called the greatest show on turf 2.0. I know that might be saying a little bit too much, but receivers Jacor Pearson and Akeem Butler are showstoppers and arguably the best receiver duo in the UFL. Behind the quarterbacks, the Battlehawks Hawks running backs room is filled with talent as well. Even with Brian Hill's departure to the NFL and Max Borgie deciding to pursue another career outside of football, Mateo Durant will be loading up the reps in the backfield and should be a good option for AJ McCarron other than his two stud wide receivers. The play action pass and RPO play should be effective as well with Durant's run threat. The team has made concerted efforts to strengthen the offensive line with the return of guards Vidal Alexander and Steven Gonzalez and center Mike Panasia. Newcomers include Jack Snyder from Houston, Canadian O-lineman Sage Dockstatter, and Florida State alum Justin Turntine, who are all competing for starting positions. On the defensive side of the ball, former Giants player Kevin Atkins is a notable returnee on the defensive line, while the acquisition of linebacker Peter Tamapinu, last season's XFL Defensive Player of the Year, is expected to make an immediate impact. The defensive backfield looks solid with returnees Willie Harvey, Travis Feeney, Carson Wells, and Brandon Sebastian, along with new faces Kalon Kennedy and Quinterio Cole. For special teams, punter Sterling Hofreiter, known for his reliable 
performance is the only returning in the special teams department. The team may look to bolster this unit further in the next dispersal draft. Overall, the Battle Hawks have a franchise regular season record of 10 wins and five losses, which is the third best winning percentage among UFL teams at the beginning of the 2024 season. They are poised for a very strong season this year with a blend of experienced players and fresh talent. Anthony Becht and his coaching staff are familiar with the league and its players, and they aim to capitalize on their well-developed roster to navigate the newly merged UFL landscape successfully. There is no doubt that their home games against last year's XFL champs, the Arlington Renegades in Week 2 and runner-up DC Defenders in Week 8 will be some fun games to watch. There's no doubt that the Dome will be packed with over 30,000 Battlehawks fans throughout the season. While the Battlehawks franchise has yet to secure any league, conference, or division championships, this year it looks very promising for the team to capture their first franchise championship ring. The future is promising for the Battlehawks, and the fans can't wait to scream caca all over downtown St. Louis. Oh, caca is law. You know, everybody loves it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave your comments below. See you next time.